So let me uh, run this example. Uh, hopefully, it will just run out of the box. So here's my web or pop sub. I'm just going to run the example. At times, I experienced a problem where my virtual machine runs low on persistent storage. And in this case, you get an error, and you have to go in and clean it up. But hopefully, it will just work out of the box right now. And while it's doing this, I'm going to take a look at the questions. All right, where, uh, where can I get uh, client-side webwarp.jar? Uh, well, that's going to be included in webwarp uh, uh, distribution. And uh, uh, you will need to wait till webwarp for Java 4.1 is released. That's when we'll have the, the version of the jar file that you can use. And it also is going to be included in the next version of webwarp for .NET release, and the same for webwarp for PHP. So that's going to be just part of the web or distributions. Okay. So here it is. My my example is running, and uh, uh, I can just type in a message and just call it test. Click send, and message goes out. And here it is. We received our own message. Okay. Now here's here's the very cool thing. So while this thing is running, and uh, oh, there's our auto correction and all this stuff. And just type one more message, say send. So here it is, message hello. So now uh, a round trip takes place. The message goes out to web orb and then comes back. Now, something else that I wanted to show you. Uh, as a part of uh, web orb uh, management console, which I'm going to bring up in just a second. So this is web orb management that is talking to the same instance of web orb that this particular Android is talking to. Okay, so if I go to the messaging server, you will see that there is this chat destination. So this is the destination that this particular Android app is talking to. Okay, one of the functionalities that we included is we call it test drive. So here in the test drive, I can create a subscriber. So here it is. I'm going to create a subscriber. Now notice that as I type a message, let's say hello subscriber from my phone, click send. Okay. You, you see that this message shows up in the browser because this is sort of a, as, as we said, test drive. So it will hear about all the messages that are published into, into that particular destination. Likewise, I can take, uh, I can send a message directly from the management console. So right here, you see this management console. And if I say, hello, Android, and click publish, you see it? That my Android received this hello Android. So the, the cool thing about this is that using WebWorp, it, it, you can really reach out and extend application to a lot more than just Android. So if, if your strategy is to build an application that will be present on both Android and let's say iPhone, okay, or Windows Phone 7, or you know, we'll have a browser, browser front end, you can use this messaging infrastructure with this unified interface to have all those applications communicating with each other. Okay? And WebWorp really provides this unified interface, which I believe is a, is a very, very powerful functionality. Okay. Uh, I, I also have a, a, a client application that I, that I built that does really the same. So uh, let me quickly run that just so, we can, so you can experience that functionality as well. So now Flash Builder is starting, so hopefully that will be quick. And uh, meanwhile, let's say there's a question. All right, so the question is, as far as I know, we need async task for network tasks to isolate them from the UI thread. It seems that the network call here is in the UI thread. Can you please explain, or am I missing something? Well, in, in this particular case, the, the actual network call happens, can happen anywhere you want to, because uh, in, I put these examples for simplicity not necessarily from, from the best practices, OK? As, as I said, you know, as far as the actual Android development, um, I'm learning myself, OK? But as far as the infrastructure providing the actual integration, I can say that we are experts. So if, if, if this particular call to send the message needs to happen outside of the thread that invoked on click, then you can easily do that just by you know, creating some sort of delegate and so on. Uh, there is really nothing that prevents you from creating the actual outbound call. Now, the outbound calls that we create are asynchronous itself. So nothing's going to be sitting in that thread and waiting for the response. So that's certainly not going to block the UI thread. Okay. All right. So here's my Flash Builder application, and uh, I'm going to actually 
I'll need to switch my workspace to RTMP. Hopefully that that will be quick. So what what I would like to show you is uh, is an is an application that uses producer consumer API that talks to exactly the same destination that this particular phone application is uh, is is using, and, uh, and that will demonstrate how two can communicate with each other. All right, so here it is starting. All right, now uh, here's a, here I have this pop sub demo. And uh, in here, I create producer and consumer objects. So here it is, my consumer and my producer. And they're configured to use uh, this chat destination. And uh, let me run this example. So here it is. And I'm going to open the phone app and the browser app side by side. All right. So here's my phone app. And uh, let me just type a, a message and once again. Just say hello there. Click publish. All right. So here it is. Hello there. Came from my my Flex application, and uh, in here we'll just say hello Flex. Click send. And here it is. Hello Flex came into the browser app directly from the phone. All right. So hopefully that that demonstrates the concept that it's not limited to just one type of applications. It's really anything that is supported by WebWorks. Okay. Now uh, that was that was messaging, and uh, uh, just to give you an idea how the code generation will, will work. So right here, when you can select the destination, if you go into code gen, uh, one of the options that will be added is the support for native Java, and the, well, the options here are the targeted environments. So uh, there will be native Java for Android and Air for Android. And when you select this option, the code is generated for that particular environment. And you can see all the generated code right here. All right, so that's that's what's going to be available now. Uh, let's see. So I have demonstrated messaging, native messaging, native remoting. Let me show you uh, the support for uh, for AI applications. So for that, I'm going to go back into Flash Builder. Uh, there is a, there is an excellent question with with messaging. Does WebWorp client maintain a persistent connection to the server, or does it pull? That is configurable. So. With RTMP, uh, once once we introduce RTMP for native Java Android apps, uh, that will establish a uh, uh, a permanent connection. Okay, uh, but but if you don't specify your endpoint as RTMP, because in my application I specified it as a, as HTTP. So here it is my my activity. You see that the endpoint is HTTP. In this case, it will do polling. Okay. And as far as the polling right now, it's a, it's a short poll, but we're working on adding support for long polling, where it polls and uh, the connection is, is, is basically intercepted by the server and it waits until messages are available. But that's more on the server side. So uh, to answer your question, uh, both options are going to be available, uh, a dedicated connection and polling. Okay. All right. Uh, so here, um, I do have uh, an application. I believe that's the one. Yeah. So this application was really just generated by the code generator, and it's supposed to be a browser-based app. But we, you know, we wanted to make sure that it's something that that you can run uh, and 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 see how the connectivity works with uh, with WebWorp. So for this, notice that my my project is referencing this WebWorp for Java for one WebWorp their services dash config. And and this is something that is going to be very important whenever you develop Air applications. So let me show you what what's going to happen in there. So here it is my WebWorp for Java for one web app web and flex, and then WebWorp dash services dash config. There's going to be a, a channel. With default channel is my dash nf. Notice that the endpoint URI is absolute. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned that the endpoint URIs must be absolute, because it's an air app. It will not be able to resolve relative URIs. Okay. So any requests that my air client will send will be going to this particular URL. And this host name, the IP address, is special from the Android emulator. This is how the host machine is identified. 
Okay. Uh, so here, one of the things that I personally found when you develop Air applications for Android, it, the, the experience of building and packaging and deploying your application onto the Android device or emulator is not as straightforward as with you know using my ID. Because with IDEA, I did not have to run a single command line in order to get this application running. It's all just UI, everything seems to be pre-configured. So with, with AIR, there's a lot more that needs to happen. So one of the things that we are going to do uh, once this, uh, once the version supporting this is released is uh, the, the generated project that we're going to create in the code generator, generator will include an AND build file. And that this build file is something that we, uh, that I would like to credit uh, Jonathan Campos, uh, the Flex user group manager here in Dallas, he, he put, put, put it together. So this build file really does a lot. So to give you an idea, all the targets that are available here, you can see them in the list. So you can install AIR on the emulator or on the device, install application on the emulator. You can just do all kinds of stuff, okay? And that may, makes it very, very easy. So for instance, to install this application on the emulator, you just select this target, click run, and then you know all the all the magic starts happening. And you can you can really see all kinds of different things that are happening. So here it says, okay, what application should we compile? So I select my application. It starts compiling and packaging that air app and then deploying it onto the actual emulator. All right, while it's doing this, let me take a look at the questions. Uh, question is how far are we on the iOS client? The timeline that we currently have is uh, in the next, I would say about eight weeks, we should have uh, support for uh, AMF and our TMP clients. So I would say that by, uh, oh, let's see, now is what, mid-March, mid by the end of May, I think it would be reasonable to expect us to have full support for RTMP and AMF for the iOS devices.